right, so uh, yeah, you wanted to see some mowing action. Well, here it comes. I got a machine coming up behind me and a machine in front of me. Rumor has it he hates it already. But that doesn't surprise me because that's dad. Let's see if we zoom in. He should be moving. It's a little funky when you first start out if you're not at four mile an hour. I just had to pull that out of the mud. That's the case. Of course, I kept my case. And let me get zoomed over here. So, yeah, he's flying pretty good. Now, when that thing starts off in a windrow and you're below four miles an hour, it's a little swirly because there's no tension on those rear wheels. Okay? So, he's really moving. But, when you get over four mile an hour, it puts a little tension on there, and then when you get over 12, then you're full on steering with the rear wheels. Now, this one here, let's see how you take a zoom out on that. This one here, old reliable. That one don't have anything on the rear wheel, so it's always swirly. But I still like this one here a lot. That's why I didn't get rid of it. But that John Deere, that's a wicked machine. She goes through anything. It's it's wet, wet down there. It gets real spongy. That case will get stuck. But that John Deere, that thing just flies. You watch, he's gonna lap Tim. I gotta teach him how to use the handle though. He just hopped in that and took off with it today. With no instruction. He's gonna catch Tim. He was halfway down when Tim started up and Tim's almost to the end and so is he. Yeah, John Deere for the win here, but you know, old reliable. You can't beat a machine that works and is paid for, you know? Now watch this, Tim's gonna have to pick up the pace. Actually, Tim's not too. Tim's not too shabby with that case. But that John Deere is just going to eat him for lunch. And it's not that it can't go faster. It's just Tim isn't pushing the machine. Dad's just going to beat the band. I don't know. Tim's drinking water and leaving a strip. Uh, the hay is not as heavy as I'd like to see it, but we just can't wait anymore. It's July 1st, and when it's July 1st, you need to be making hay. You don't need to be sitting on your thumbs or repairing uh, tractors. You need to be making hay. So I'm just going to talk to Dad and Tim will hear a little bit, and then I'm going to uh, then I'm going to go take off. I have to go push out a a washout so I can get my baler across it and then I'm going to go rake hay so that I can bale it tomorrow. And look at this guy, he's going like crazy. And he's slow on the ends. I don't know why he's slow on the ends, he needs to speed that up. But That thing, half a gallon to the acre is what it takes to run that machine. This one here that Tim's running, a little slower, a little older, 1.2 gallons to the acre. So if you're looking for fuel economy, right here, right now, it's that John Deere. If you're looking for, I don't know, I don't know what John Deere's gonna be, so I can't say it's reliable, but that Case WD2303 has been a very reliable machine. So anyway, no smoke from either of them, obviously. We maintain them well. Uh, but yeah, goddamn bugs bite me. Anyway, if you like the video of two machines running, yeah, you can please comment, rate, and subscribe. Rate and subscribe. Um, yeah, and I got some big news. Big news, finally did it. Just haven't gotten around to telling everybody about it. But that's for the next video. So thanks for watching. Right. All right, new cameraman here. This is my sister's kid, Grant. You've seen him in a couple of videos. So he's riding around in the brand new John Deere W235. Planting hay that was, or mowing hay that was planted uh, in two sections, in two sessions, once last fall. I thought the reed canary grass had died out over the winter, but I was wrong. As you can see, it is here. There's some foxtail and other things in here too, so that's why I'm cutting it off. But anyways, I'm going to give you an overview of what I like and dislike about this mower now that I've been using it for a few days. I didn't want to 
to jump the gun like I did with that New Holland I had last year and say that I liked it when the fact of the matter is that thing was the biggest piece of shit known to mankind. So anyway, uh, the speed of this machine is is unbelievable. I mean, I'm, I'm averaging, what am I averaging? 20, well, let's see, where are we at here? 12.7 acres an hour, and I'm actually not, I don't feel like I'm going very fast, um, for the most part I'm not, because it was a little bit rough down on the ends until I get the outside ground is done. Uh, things I don't like about it is when you make a corner, it gouges the ground up or digs the ground up, because the tires are really aggressive. But that's a catch-22 because aggressive tires will get you through the through the wet spots, and I've been in some wet spots, uh, and it has gone right through, like it's not even like it's not even mud there. Um, seems to be conditioning pretty good. Uh, corners nice. I like the way it steers. I like the way it goes up and down up, up and down the road. I had a wash out here, so I put some old nails on there, but anyway, uh, speed of the machine, you get into heavy hay, and the engine does not die down at all, the header does not die down at all, so I'm, I'm pretty much going to say that the machine is doing better than I expected. Uh, it is a little bit slow on the computer. So when you fire the machine up, you have got to wait for the computer to completely boot. If it does not completely boot, then uh, something's not going to work. Like your blinker lights. Now, which is kind of weird because the blinker lights and the headlights are all controlled by this stupid computer. So if there's a glitch in the computer, that's the first thing that doesn't work. So I think that John Deere needs to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of work done on that. But all in all, be patient with it. Uh, wait for the computer to completely load up. And if there's an error, which it will do, uh, you got to turn the key backwards, shut it off, then start all over again. And then it boots up lightning fast. And uh, you know, then you're able to. Then you have headlights and turn signals. So it's just a. It's probably just me, not really the machine. I'm getting a little bit. You know, I'm used to another manufacturer's machine, and that's always a difficult thing to go from one to the other. Now the hand controls are backwards from the New Holland case. So them being backwards means that it's taken me a little bit longer to figure out how to drive the thing. And, you know, not bad. And it's pretty simple. One up, two down, three speeds up and slows down your header speed. Now I've got the header speed at 2,000 RPMs. Now if you hit the number three button, you'll hear it. That header just jumps to life, cuts like a son of a bitch, and that's it, my friends. It is just really doing a bang-up job. And, you know, I like it. I actually am going to say that if you're in the market for a new machine, uh, you can seriously consider the John Deere Moco W235 as your next purchase. Uh, this header is on the 14.6. It's not the... It's not the 16-foot header. Uh, there's a reason I did that, uh, because I had that 17-foot header on the case, or the New Holland, 16, 17-foot header on the New Holland, and I just couldn't get through the gates. And it was more than a monster to take down the road. So I opted for the smaller header. And even with the smaller header, I'm still going more than an acre an hour faster just getting used to the machine than I could with the new Holland. So anyways, that's my first review of the, of the John Deere W235. So if you like it, you can please comment, rate, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out OneMolenFarmer.com. The link is probably not in the description below, but you can always go to your browser and hit www.OneMolenFarmer.com. Thanks again. Okay, you can shut it off.